Let's say we're given the graph of this function and we're asked to find the domain and range. Now, the arrowheads indicate that the function doesn't ever stop. It goes on and on in that direction forever, and it goes on and on in that direction forever. Because there are no holes or asymptotes or any breaks in the graph, we say that the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. That's to say that any x value all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity has a corresponding y value. Now for the range, we're looking at the y values. The range is also negative infinity to infinity because this function decreases all the way down to negative infinity and increases all the way to positive infinity. So here we're looking at which y values are hit by the function at some point of time. Let's say we modify the same graph without the arrowheads. Let's say we stop our function at negative three on the left-hand side and positive three on the right-hand side. Now here you'll notice that there's an open circle here. That means at x equals negative three, there is no y value. Everything to the right of negative 3 does have a corresponding y value. So it's not just negative 2, but negative 2.9 and negative 2.99. All of those numbers have corresponding y values, so they're in the domain. But negative 3 itself is not. On the other side, the solid dot indicates that positive 3 is in the domain. So the domain here is negative 3 excluded to positive 3 included. Inclusion is indicated by the brackets, and exclusion is indicated by parentheses. Now for the range, we're looking at what the lowest y value is that the function hits, and then what the highest y value is that the function hits. So we can see that the y value 1 doesn't actually get hit or accomplished. There are no x values for which the y value is positive 1. So 1 has to get excluded, but all the numbers above it, but below 2, do have corresponding x values. So if I say, hey, for, uh, x, uh, for y equals 1.5, what's x? We can go to the left and then kind of come down and say maybe 2.25. So the range starts at 1, but we don't include 1 because of the open circle. And then we see, is 2 accomplished? Right there. Does the function hit 3? Right there. Does the function hit 4? Right there. Does the function hit 5? Right there. But the function stops here. It doesn't go higher. So my range will be from 1 to 5, but excluding the 1 and including the 5, because we do actually achieve the y value of 5. Let's say we modify the graph to be a straight horizontal line from negative 3 to positive 4. Now you'll notice that there are no holes or no breaks in the, in, the func in the graph of the function. So we say that the domain will be from negative 3 to positive 4 inclusive of both numbers that we indicate by brackets on both sides. Now for the range, you'll notice that the y value at negative 3 is 4. The y value at negative 2 is 4. The y value at negative 1 is 4. No matter what x value I pick in this domain, the y value will always be 4. So when the range is not an interval, but just one single number, we indicate it with curly brackets. So in this case, the range is just the number 4. It never changes, it's always 4. No matter what number you plug in from negative 3 all the way to 4, the y value or the output will always be the number 4 itself. Let's say we look at this broken graph, or piecewise defined function. We observe first that there's an open circle at negative 3. Then it's nice and continuous and smooth until we get to 0. There's an open circle here. Then it's nice and smooth again, continuous until 2. But actually, 2 is not a problem. It's just the solid dot. So we can continue on. Now at 4, there's a gap. There's an open circle and then the problem jumps up here to a closed circle and then continues on. So if we were looking at the domain of this function, we actually have to look at it in pieces. The first piece is from negative 3 to 0. 
Now we're not including negative three or zero because there's open circles on both ends, which is to say that x equals negative three doesn't have a corresponding y value, x equals zero doesn't have a corresponding y value either. Now here, this question tends to trick a lot of students because they often think that there's going to be a break at x equals four. There actually isn't, because if we start at zero and we start walking to the right on the x-axis, does zero have a corresponding y value? No. So there's gonna be an open parentheses at zero. But what about all the numbers to the right of zero, but less than one? So all of these numbers, they all have corresponding y values here. So these numbers are in the domain. From one to two, sure, all these y values correspond come from these x values. From two to three, yeah, no problems. From three to four, no problems, except we might think that there's a problem at four. However, the domain doesn't care that there's an open circle on the graph somewhere. Is there a corresponding y value for the number four? And the answer is actually yes. So don't get seduced by these open circles. Look above and below the number, is there a corresponding y value? If so, great. Then that means that this number four is in the domain because I can plug it into the function and get this y value. And then we go all the way to five and here there's an open circle. So the thing I'm trying to get at is once we start at zero, we actually don't run into any problems until we get to five. So zero is where the function is undefined. It's not included in the domain. Five is where the function is undefined, so it's not included in the domain either. That's why our domain is from negative three to zero, union zero to five. Four is not an issue because there is a corresponding y value at four. Now for the range, things get a little more interesting. So remember, for a range, we're looking at which y values the function hits or passes through. The lowest y value we see is positive two, which is this number, but it doesn't actually have a filled in circle there. So that means I'm going to start at positive two and move my way up, and all of these numbers between two and three have corresponding y values right here, or have corresponding x values for these y values. From three to four, now we see that there's an open circle here. If we go to the left, there are no uh, dots here that I could say the function hits. And if I move to the right, I run into an open circle here as well. So I start at two, the first problem I reach is at the number four. So the first piece of my range will be from two to four. Neither endpoint is going to be included. And then we actually take a little breather there are no y values that the function hits between four and six. However, from six to seven, we can include six. It does achieve that point there, but it does not hit seven. So the second half of the range will be from six to seven, including the six because there's a solid dot there, but excluding the seven because there's an open circle there. One more for good measure, we're asked to find the domain and range for this graph. Again, for the domain, we start looking at the x values. So we start our function at negative three, for which the function is defined. Then we move to our right, no issues, no issues. There may be an issue at negative one because there's a gap or a break in the function. However, there is a y value when x is equal to negative one, it's three. There's a solid dot there. So I don't have an issue at negative one. Even though there's a gap, I still have a y value there. Then I move to the right of negative one. I have all these y values, no problem, no problem, no problem, until I get to two. So from negative one to two, no problems, I have all these y values. At two, you might be thinking, well, there's an open circle here, but is there a corresponding y value for x equals two? Yes, it's five. So at x equals two, I don't have any issues, even though there's a gap in the, in the function. Then I move on, all of these y values exist all the way until the end of the graph at four. 
So if you think about it, we actually had two breaks in the graph, but there were no breaks in the domain. Every single number from negative three to positive four did give us a corresponding y value. So the domain is from negative three to four, including both those numbers. For the range, we look at the lowest y value the function hits, which is one. And then it goes up until three. Now you might say, well, this function is not defined here with a y value of three, but actually if we go to the other side, here we see that it does hit y equals three when x equals negative one. So the range will start from one to three, and then we take a breather and we continue on and it's just the number five. So here we write our interval from one to three with closed brackets on either side or square brackets on either side. Union, just the number five. And remember when it's just one single number, we use curly brackets. And that's it.